grab his sword so he can't really do much. He's <laughs> up in the air. Look at his, his scream there. Please do not remove your ancient smartphone while our patented guidance stone technology cries into it. There we go. <laughs> hey guys, it's Anime K Swimming Bird, and welcome to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Nintendo Switch and Wii U. This is the first brand new major console Zelda game in years. And now that it's officially out, I picked up a Switch and my own copy of the game to play through and experience with you guys. So let's begin with something you've most likely never really heard in a Zelda game before, voice acting. There are voices for the main characters in a bunch of the cutscenes, and I feel like that really goes a long way towards making the story more engrossing and the world that much more captivating to play in. This is the first of many major innovations we're gonna see and changes that really do move the series forward. This is the biggest world of any Zelda title ever. It allows tons of freedom, and it starts very quickly, especially compared to most modern Zeldas. We're gonna get right into it and have the freedom to run around, but first, we have to listen to the voice in the light. Can you hear it? It's very faint, but it's there, and it's telling us to... That's what we're gonna do. Now this game has been getting high praise, glowing reviews. I'm gonna give my thoughts as we play through the adventure, but I wanna know how you guys feel. If you wanna leave a comment, let me know how you feel about all the changes to the Zelda formula, as well as how you're finding the series as we go along. Here we go. Open your eyes. With a very odd start to a Zelda game. You wouldn't expect to see this. Open your eyes. When you first open your eyes, a weird device looming overhead. Wake up, Link. And our hero, just floating in a techno pool of water, wearing only his undershorts. <laughs> He's got to be very confused waking up, as I'm sure a lot of you guys might be, but we're going to learn along with him just what is happening here. If you have never played or seen a Zelda game before, this is a great one to start with, because it does almost feel like a new series. There's so many differences. But if you have played Zelda, there are tons and tons of callbacks and returns to concepts from older games. One of the things I feel like Breath of the Wild does best is it makes good on earlier ideas and really improves them. So let's get this dripping boy out of this cave <laughs> and running through the wilderness very shortly here. This Link, he's, he, of course he's Link. He's got pointy ears, he's the hero, but he's quite a bit different from other Links in the past. He can do a lot of, no pun intended, he can do a lot of stuff that other Links might not be able to do including something that is very odd for a 3D Zelda, jumping. We can jump whenever we want. We can also dash around. The stamina meter returns from Skyward Sword. Now, one thing I recommend, especially if you're playing on Switch, is go into the options and change the jump button. The default of B to dash and X to jump is kind of awkward, I felt like, but if you have X for dash, you can kind of roll your thumb back over the B button, like playing Mario Brothers, where you can still dash and jump around. So I feel like it makes it a lot easier. And here is our next piece of ancient technology to help us out, staring us right in the face. That is a Sheikah Slate. Take it. It will help guide you after your long slumber. Another thing I feel like this game does really well is it blends this old technology with kind of magical glyphs and things to make it feel like it fits in a medieval world. It never feels too out of place, despite the fact that Link is basically holding a smartphone. <laughs> this is the Sheikah Slate, a mysterious tablet with a glowing center. You've never seen this device before, and yet there's something familiar about it. It might feel like the gamepad you could be holding when you're playing this, or the, the Switch, of course. And I, of course, that's intentional, I think. Let's put some clothes on this kid, though. And here's an Easter egg that you might not see if you don't do it almost immediately. So when you open a chest from the front, he'll bend over and open it normally. But if you do the side, He'll kick it, and if he doesn't have shoes on, he will hurt his toes. <laughs> Well-worn trousers. These old trousers are threadbare in spots, but they're surprisingly comfortable. The legs are a bit too short, though. So let's pop those on by pausing and going into the inventory. And now, when we kick a chest, he won't hurt his little toes. There we go. The old shirt. A thin shirt made long ago. It's coming apart at the seams, but it's better than nothing. The sleeves are a bit on the short side. And you will notice, it looks like this set of clothing is for somebody younger. It's very short on Link. And we can grab barrels and mess with crates and stuff in here. Just, you know, the common mischief you'd get up to in a Zelda game. But we'll do more of that when we are out of this cave. Hold the Sheikah Slate up to the pedestal. That will show you the way. 
So while this stuff feels like it does fit in with this world, it is very strange to have it in a Zelda game in a way. You know, it's the first time we've had this type of technology, really. A little bit in Skyward Sword. But then they, they make some of the dialogue here authenticating. Sheikah Slate confirmed. They definitely make it where it's uh, something you wouldn't normally hear from a character in Zelda, so it feels very foreign and strange. Okay. And with that, we're about to take our first steps out into the light to run amok. Link, you are the light. Our light. That must shine upon Hyrule once again. Now go. And if the voice in the light is telling us, we gotta listen. <laughs> it hasn't steered us wrong so far, so... Okay, and now we can climb on almost anything in this game. Certain Sheikah stuff you're not able to climb on. That'll come into play in the shrines, but pretty much anything else, you can just climb up using your stamina. But I will let the game speak for itself here, because this is a very beautiful moment. First look out on Hyrule. And if you've seen that art from the original Zelda, with Link standing on the cliff, intentionally mirroring that shot in this to kind of evoke the first Zelda, the sense of freedom that a lot of players had. And we could just, you know, start running and go wherever we want to go once we grab this tree branch. We don't really need it, but this is our first weapon that we can swing around with Y. But I'm gonna go talk to this old man, this mysterious, bearded, hooded old man, because he's got some hints for us. Grab some mushrooms, and I think because we can jump, it, all, it seems like they put some mushrooms in here very early as a little nod to Mario, kind of like Link's Awakening, how you can jump around and fight Mario enemies in that game. So this branch here is not very strong, and a lot of the early weapons we're gonna get will break, but as you go along, you'll find stuff that is, of course, you know, more durable, will last longer, but there's definitely a sense that they want you to use a bunch of different weapons. You can hit right on the D-pad and switch between them with the right stick. There's a lot of different weapons that you'll find early on. Spears, axes, clubs, swords, and they break easily so that you will try them all out and get a sense of what you like to use later when you've got, you know, more weapon variety opened up. Then you can pick the ones that you like to use the most. And we're going to jump in the air and grab an apple. <laughs> Look at him, he's very determined to get those apples. I mean, there's one right behind his head. So uh, apples pretty common and useful in a lot of ways, and they'll heal half a heart, but there are other things that will heal more, like that mysterious baked good there. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, we'll talk to him first before I steal his stuff. Oh, ho, ho. well met, stranger. It's rather unusual to see another soul in these parts. Who are you? Me? I'll spare you my life story. Just an old fool who's lived here alone for quite some time now. What brings a bright-eyed young man like you to a place like this? Where are we? I'm answering a question with a question. That is fair enough. As I cannot imagine our meeting to be a simple coincidence, I shall tell you. This is the Great Plateau. According to legend, this is the birthplace of the entire kingdom of Hyrule. You're very short for a hero. <laughs> We're like half the size, and he's so burly for an old guy. But he's cool. I like his little cane lantern. And as you can see, I was moving the uh, camera around during the conversation. That temple there, long ago, was the site of many sacred ceremonies. Ever since the decline of the kingdom a hundred years ago, it has sat abandoned and in a state of decay. Go, go over there. Yet another forgotten entity, a mere ghost of its former self. I shall be here for some time. Please let me know if I may be of service. So we can go ahead and just kind of take some of his stuff. Here's a torch that we can use to light stuff on fire. Well then, just help yourself to that torch there, and how may I ask, are you planning to use it? We could tell him it's a secret. I'm going to let him know we're going to set things on fire with it. <laughs> Got to be truthful with this old man. That is rather unnerving. Please be cautious with that around any dry grass that might catch fire. You know, there are tons of monsters, plenty of them rather, in this area. That torch would make for a good weapon if need be. Uh -huh. However, do not just swing it around without purpose. You must face your opponents and lock your sights on them. So, like plenty of 3D Zeldas, we can lock on and hop around and do backflips and all that cool stuff. We'll get into the combat here in a second. I'm going to take this, a baked apple, which you see 
heals three quarters of a heart instead of just a half. So giving you a little hint that, you know, you want to cook your food if you want to get more effects out of them. I beg your pardon, I do believe that is my baked apple. You can't just go about taking whatever you please. Oh, forgive me, I could not resist pulling your leg. Please help yourself. An apple and an open flame make for a succulent treat. So we can drop some apples there. You might notice also Link has a rope holding his branch. But if we want to cook stuff, we're better off finding a cooking fire or a pot to cook it in. I'm going to grab this woodcutter's axe and uh, keep my eyes open for any enemies here as we head down the hill. I'm going to start using my tree branches because they will break pretty quickly, but we'll get a sense of the combat just by smacking around some bokoblins. That one was in the woods doing who knows what. But he's got a branch as well, so we're on equal footing here. So you can just kind of tap Y to smack him around. You can see this is pretty much the weakest weapon in the game because it breaks almost immediately. So we're going to go through weapons pretty quickly, like I mentioned in the early area, but we'll get better stuff as we go along. And the enemies drop little pieces of themselves that we can use in elixirs. And I'll get into cooking and elixirs and stuff when it's a little more relevant later on. But yeah, we can kind of scurry around in the wilderness, find a bunch of stuff, and, uh, and hoard it for when we need it. Now, when you're climbing, you can hit the jump button to exhaust a ton of stamina, but you'll jump up pretty far. And most of the early areas in the game, you can use that to get around, so you don't have to slowly climb. And you'll get more stamina as you go. Oh, we're taking too long. Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. The light's getting impatient. So we can pull up the map with the minus button and see where we need to go. Now, I do recommend heading towards this, as tempting as it is to explore this whole region and the 15 huge regions in the game. You want to kind of go towards some of the objectives because it does save you time later, and we'll be able to see where we want to go a little better. We can also click in the right stick to get a view through the Sheikah Slate, and we can actually use that to mark points on the map, and then they will show up on the greater map. You can see just how far away those peaks are. You can turn stamps and uh, or turn pins into stamps if you want to mark like enemies or treasure. So let's jump right off here. Before I do that though, I want to show something. I'm going to grab a couple of mushrooms. You can hold up to five things and then if I tap down I can kind of toss these over. I'm going to toss them down into the water because you see there's some fish there. Let's jump off though. We'll, we'll worry about those mushrooms in a second. I'm going to dive in and meet this little guy here. With a, it's almost like a bean face. Ha ha ha! You found me. Huh? You're not Hestu. But you can see me? I didn't know your kind could see the children of the forest. Well, if you're under Hestu, please return this to him. So this is our first of many Korok seeds. There are 900 of these in the game, but they are very useful, as we will find out later on. Oh, and my friends are hiding in lots of different places, too. Don't be shy about poking your nose into suspicious places. So the Koroks return from Wind Waker. I'm glad to see that. You will see a lot of these guys. Now, I want to get at least one fish here. And if I run and jump, I could probably get in there and grab one of them. I tried to lure them with the mushrooms. There we go. So there's no proper fishing, but you can lure fish with food like that. I'm going to head up this rock here because there is something special. The Master Sword is just waiting there. No, that was a joke they made on the, uh, the Treehouse stream when the game was originally showed off that there's a, a sword right at the beginning, but it is not the Master Sword. It's just a rusty broadsword, but it will be useful. And you got to remember that there are spots around that you can't access until later. So I'm going to kind of keep a keep an eye on that spot there and uh, and return when we can actually blast open that weakened rock. Now, I did mention that you can throw your weapons and some of them break very easily, but they can be pretty useful to throw because you do more damage. We'll see some glimpses of other ancient technology as we head around the Temple of Time and get some materials. This is very useful to collect these early on. Whenever you see one of these guardians and it is uh, broken here, you can go up to it and hit A and search it to get some good stuff. So that's what I'm going to try to do as we make our way over to the Temple of Time. I'm going to grab a couple things here before we head to where we're supposed to. So we are ignoring the light a little bit. Now this Bokoblin has an actual club, so i got to be a little more careful. And I can dodge and jump around, and if I'm careful enough, you know, we can backflip over stuff. I'm going to switch to my sword in a second here, but you can also hit enemies when they're down. It's a little cheap, but, you know, get that extra damage in. A lot of the time you're going to be outnumbered, so you got to use what you can to outsmart all these monsters. And this place is a, it's almost like a little sanctuary in a way for you to learn about the game, but it can still be... Pretty scary. You can die very easily in this game early on, so you got to be careful. Here's a couple arrows. I don't think the rest of those pots have anything. 
And that's how he opens chests when you're in the front of him. But there we go, our first bow that we can use. We can hold down ZR to aim. I really love the archery in this. It is one of the coolest parts. And there's a statue that you might recognize if you played Skyward Sword. This this game definitely has a lot of callbacks, like I mentioned earlier, in the, you know, the corks showing up, these statues. The goddess statue smiles upon you. There's even little ones here. And we could pray, you know, we prayed at it, but nothing really happened, so I have to keep that in the back of my mind for later on. Let me grab a couple other ancient screws and whatnot from these guys. But like I mentioned, yeah, you can sell a ton of materials to get rupees, but they are useful later on to uh, to get some cool stuff. So I'm going to try to collect as many as I can as we go along here. And I will jump on over down into here. Ooh, careful. If we see a butterfly, you might want to sneak up on it, but if you're quick enough with a lot of those critters, you can grab them before they get away. It's just a little easier to hold down the uh, the left control stick and sneak. And then you see that little purple line in the circle in the bottom right near the minimap? That is our sound meter, so however much noise we're making, that will show how easy it is for us to be detected. So it is definitely worth your while to be a little sneaky, especially around enemies when there are groups of them. And splashing through the water, of course, is not the best thing to do if you're trying to sneak around, but we'll be okay. I got a Boca Boon Club, and we'll be all right using their own tools against them. Ooh, some things won't actually stun them enough to interrupt their attacks, so you do have to be careful, but you can smack them out of the air. There we go, and you saw I already took a half a heart, so I could eat an apple if I wanted, try to get a little health back. So that is the way that you have to recover stuff if you're taking some damage. It does get easier later on because you can get better food and things that will help you from dying. But look, these guys, they're not dumb despite being little monsters. They can hear you and uh, they'll know if you're trying to get in there and uh, sneak up on them. And there are stealth strikes. If you're sneaky enough, you can get behind an enemy and hit Y to kind of backstab them or do just a critical attack that will take down a ton of their health. The ax is very good for chopping stuff. Chopping choo-choos as well, if you need to do that. And there's some jelly that will be a little useful more later on. But this is a chest that you definitely want to get because we are going to upgrade from our short short, or little high waters, to Hylian trousers, traditional dress trousers of Hyrule. The plush fabric makes these trousers quite comfortable, and their high durability makes them ideal for travelers. So an armor boost, and also we look a little, a little cooler there, as you can see. So armor is, uh, there's a lot of armor in the game, and it will not break, unlike the weapons and stuff like that. But it is a little tough to come by, so you gotta be on the lookout for chests all over the place. There's no compass to tell you where chests are, but you can find it if you're looking. You gotta be curious and look for that stuff. Here's a Bokoblin camp, and they do have a guard, so if I'm not careful, he will spot me and sound the alarm. If I happen to aim this right, I might be able to, gotta shoot it a little higher there. Maybe I can hit the rope. I only have so many arrows here, so if I run out, I'll probably just move along. But that rope there, if you can shoot it, it does work well to uh, stop these guys from being much trouble. My last arrow, fly true. No. <laughs> it's easier to hit the thing, but if you can hit the rope, it will fall down. We'll do that later when I've got more supplies. Right now, we really should be heading towards that spot on our map. And there it is. There's a couple of different things we can do here, though. You can see there's Bokoblin all set up next to some explosive barrels. Lots of little situations that they're definitely trying to steer you towards to get you to learn the tricks of travel and, you know, what to find, what to do in situations. This is definitely the training ground in a lot of ways. But, again, you can still die, so got to be careful. Make sure you've got plenty of food and you're watching your health because so many things, when you only have three hearts, so many things are devastating, like an explosion that didn't actually happen. <laughs> so they uh, that rock missed. So I'm going to have to go down here and maybe fight these guys the old-fashioned way. But it is going to be uh, a little tough to take them on. I wonder if I can hit this hard enough to... Uh, nope, they didn't hear that at all. These, uh, these explosive barrels are a little hardier than they look, but I probably can throw something a little bit tougher and actually get them to explode. And then I can pick all my stuff up. Oh, they're not falling for it. They're going back to get their weapons. I gotta be careful around this. But he's gonna, okay, he's gonna pick that up and I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Cause there we go, that set those off. 
It's uh, they're hardier than they look, but one barrel thrown will make an explosion set off in a chain reaction, and then they're all dead. And I took a bit of uh, parts there, but I can eat something good, like an apple or a mushroom. And there we go. And uh, they did have a steak that I could take there, so I'm gonna grab that. Take whatever's sitting around. If you have a weapon that's on fire, you want to make sure you put it in your inventory, you know, unequip it, and it will go back to being not in flames. And uh, you can see a lot of arrows here. This is kind of a hint that if you let enemies shoot at you with their bow, then you can pick up a bunch of their arrows. And that little question mark above them, when they see you, it'll be a white question mark, and then it'll fill up with red as they kind of investigate and then become a yellow exclamation mark as they are ready to uh, attack and they figure out that you're trouble. So there we go, picked up a couple arrows there. I'm gonna head in and, ooh, jeez, get these guys with my ax. You can charge up attacks. Very useful with the ax or heavy weapons because you can keep swinging it and hit for a ton of damage and knock them off their feet, knock their shields out of their hands if they've got them. We've got a book of bow here. Now we can switch between bows. When we've got our bow out, you just hit right on the control pad. And there you go. If you want to put your bow away, just kind of dash around or pull your weapon out. It makes it a little easier. And we've got some extra arrows, so I can take that camp out. Now this guy, he's got a sword and a shield, so he might be a bit tougher. He's also going to throw rocks. If they don't have bows, they will sometimes throw rocks at you. And the final attack on that axe swing can uh, do some good slam damage, but it might exhaust you if you're not careful. Let's grab his shield. And I'll also grab his sword so he can't really do much. He's up in the air. Look at his, his scream there. He's going to eat his necklace. All right, I'm going to grab his sword, pull my shield out by targeting. Whenever you're targeting, as long as you're not attacking, you'll have your shield in front of you as long as you've got one. Definitely helps defend against arrows and attacks. Wait for the right moment. And this is where we are supposed to go. So let's get back to the objective, and then I'll have some fun going around the Bokoblin camps. Place the Sheikah Slate in the pedestal. Okay. This isn't the light voice, but I'll trust it anyways. Gotta listen to what the strange ancient technology is telling me to do. There we go. All right, simple enough. We made it to our objective. Sheikah Tower activated. Please watch for falling rocks. <laughs> and if I was Link, I would just dash out of there. But he's, uh, he's not so quick. <laughs> he's been asleep for a bit, so he's a little groggy. But here we go. This is the first of 15 towers that we will be activating to make sure we can find our way around the region. And even the Bokoblin are like, what <laughs> is going on? These have been dormant for quite a while, as you can see. The rock has been covering it for quite some time. And there they are, popping up all over the land. So again, this is uh, teaching you that when you see a tower, seek it out get to the top of it, because once you activate it, then it is much easier to get around. We will now be able to see a whole map of this region, the Great Plateau, pretty big despite being the smallest of the areas, and it is uh, you know, more expansive than you would, would think, but once you get out into the open world, it seems like so small. Distilling local information. Please do not remove your ancient smartphone while our patented Guidance Stone technology cries into it. There we go. <laughs> All right. So with that tier of information, we've got... Da -da -da -da, the map and the familiar Zelda chime. Regional map extracted. And now we can take our Sheikah Slate back. And there we go. We can see all around the Great Plateau. A lot of stuff is marked, so it's definitely useful to try to look around. Try, try to remember. It's the light. You have been asleep for the past 100 years. <sighs> the beast. When the beast regains its true power, this world will face its end. Link. Before
before it's too late. So that's a familiar, <laughs> familiar looking beast if you've played Zelda before. Looming around the castle, and now you can see that corruption all around it, spinning around. And while we're up on this tower, might as well take the time to pin these shrines, make it easier on us to find them later on when we're seeking them out. We can see kind of farther off, but you want to focus on the Great Plateau for now, of course. And there's so many sights off in the distance, but we are looking for the shrines just to start. Because you can see, yeah, all the way over there, that is still on the Great Plateau, so there's a lot of stuff to see just in this area and a lot of danger that we'll find ahead. And now that we've activated that, we've got our Sheikah Slate, we can even warp back to the Shrine of Resurrection, but this is a good spot that we can teleport to with fast travel. We just go into the map and select where we want to go, and we can also see those pins, but it's definitely a good way to get around, so you don't always have to be running all over the place. If you've discovered an area, you can get back to it easily. All right, we didn't have, have to climb that one. And we've got a familiar sight here, <laughs> gliding in. He's a real action old man. My, my, it would seem we have quite the enigma here. This tower and others just like it have erupted across the land, one after another. It is almost as though a long dormant power has awoken quite suddenly. If you do not mind me asking, did anything odd occur while you were atop that tower? I heard a voice. Well now, a voice, you say. And did you happen to recognize this mysterious voice? No. I see. Well, that is unfortunate. Hmm. I assume you caught sight of that atrocity in shrouding the castle. That is Calamity Ganon. One hundred years ago, that vile entity brought the kingdom of Hyrule to ruin. It appeared suddenly and destroyed everything in its path. So many innocent lives were lost in its wake. For a century, the very symbol of our kingdom, Hyrule Castle, has managed to contain that evil, but just barely. There it festers, building its strength for the moment it will unleash its blight upon the land once again. It will appear that moment is fast approaching. What do I do? Give me some guidance. With your sage old wisdom. <laughs> I must ask you, courageous one, do you intend to make your way to the castle? Hmm? Maybe. He's on to me. You need not say a word. Your eyes reveal the determination within. Here, on this isolated plateau, we are surrounded on all sides by steep cliffs with no way down. If you were to try to jump off, well, no death could be more certain or more foolish. Ooh. Of course, if you had a paraglider like mine, that would be quite another story. Hand it over, old man. <laughs> that sounds like something the cartoon link would say. Paraglider? Oh, piqued your interest, have I? Yes, I didn't come soaring down here on my own feathery wings, you know. Worry not, I will happily agree to give you my paraglider, but not for nothing. Let's see now. How about I trade it for a bit of treasure that slumbers nearby? So here is our next main quest on the isolated plateau. So we can look at those in our adventure log to see what we need to do and mark it on the map. Come, let me show you something. What is it? <laughs> Don't be hasty now, just follow me. So he's going to waddle his way over there. But yeah, the Great Plateau, if you try to climb down off the edges, you will just fall into the fog. So there's supposed to be a secret way to get off without the paraglider, but for now we have to do what the old man says, and then we've got the world open to us after this first area. Do you see that structure there, the one shining with a strange light? It began glowing at the exact moment those towers rose up from the ground. That's where we're headed. The first of four on the Great Plateau. I would think such a place might house some sort of treasure, wouldn't you? Treasure for the Paraglider. A fair exchange, I believe. Okay, that is our goal. Go on, fetch me any treasure you find inside that shrine. I look forward to your successful return. So that's where we're going to head before we finish up. I'm going to try to take out this little camp of Bokoblins. And those guys on the guard tower, there was one before when I was shooting the lantern, but... You kind of want to take him out if you can beforehand because, there we go, hit him right in the face for a critical hit. If you can take out enemies and uh, make sure that the others aren't alerted, it is much easier to go through these. But they're not dumb. They will hear if I start smashing this stuff. So if I do break that, yep, they heard that because sound is a factor. So I'm going to ru rush in there before they can really get their weapons and try to take these guys on. And of course, I can charge up other weapons too, not just the axe, so I can get a nice spin attack going that has pretty good range. Make sure I am blocking those arrows. And we got some extra shields here, so if my shields break, that's fine. Really going through a lot of the 
weapons that uh, are weaker is a good way to start. That way you save your stronger ones for tougher foes. And you saw that Bokoblin, he actually went over and grabbed the bow from the dead one that I didn't pick up and used it against me. So that was really cool. There is a lot to their AI. And uh, they're, they're really charming enemies. All the enemies in this are really interesting. But the Bokoblin, I definitely feel like you see a lot of them, especially early on. So you get to kind of have a love-hate relationship with them. And I think that's why they made them into amiibo. All right. So we've got multiple shields. So if that one breaks, that's not a big deal. Definitely want to use your axe on stuff like crates and barrels because other weapons will take forever and they'll probably break before they crack it open. And if you heard, there was like a little ding-ding when we took out the camp. And now we've got a traveler's sword as a reward. So there's certain chests that will only open when we have cleared out the enemies. I'm going to focus on my clubs here before we move on. And they have cool little setups. Like, this is one of the simpler camps, but they've got little barriers and stuff to kind of stand in the way. You want to try to loot as much as you can. Arrows are much more precious than weapons in this, I feel like. And arrows can get expensive if you're trying to get them. So I feel like, you know, save your arrows and try to use them at least a little sparingly at first, because most of these enemies are pretty weak. You don't really need arrows to take them down. I used a ton of arrows when I first started out, and then you run out of them, and you don't have that option to take out the guard towers and stuff, so it is good to try to use those. And I, I did a lot of climbing when I first started, slowly climbing over stuff, but like I mentioned, you know, if you, if you want to do that jump while you're climbing, it will usually leave you enough stamina with most heights to get to where you need to go. There was a butterfly there, but it was on to me before I was able to snatch it. And there we go. And one other little tip. If you're climbing and you start to run out of stamina, it goes into the red. Use that last little bit to jump and try to get to your target before you fall off because that will really help you in the long run to make, you know, heights before you fall, especially early on. We don't have the paraglider, so we're going to be in trouble if we fall. This is a little bonus chest. There's a couple of them here if you get the DLC just as a, a little, you know, pre-order bonus thing. So I, I got the DLC for when that comes out later in the year. They're going to add even more to this game. But they're just little things that will help you slightly early on. Nothing too special. There's a ruby, five bomb arrows, and another one. Bomb arrows are pretty helpful. And then the last one is a Switch t-shirt, which looks very strange. But we'll check it out when we get to that point. Thank you guys for watching. Sheikah Slate confirmed. We are going to end here. And then next episode, we will start the first of four shrines, get some cool powers, travel gate registered to Matt. So once you, you know, scan that, access granted. We can get in here, but also we can warp to any of these shrines. So it is very helpful. All right, next on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, we will travel in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. Maybe subscribe if you haven't. And we'll see you next time when we head down into the shrine.